This is all related to the Holloway case. This is all of the files. Police Commissioner Dolph Richardson is Aruba's lead investigator on the Natalie Holloway case. I have four of them in my office because of that I would like, I like to keep close to me. These are, these are all of them. In his first ever on-camera interview for this case, Richardson is careful not to give up too many details. But he wants the world to know he takes his job very seriously. We have never stopped working this case. We, heard, we have heard that in the media, but that was just false information. We have four detectives that are assigned to the case at this point, And the moment we need to make the group bigger, we will do so. It all depends on the leads that are coming in, and so we're following, following up on, on those leads. And so this For is nearly three uh, years, Richardson has faced many setbacks, his circumstantial evidence repeatedly rejected by the Aruban courts. The case still unsolved. What's your theory? That's a good question. I have many theories, <laughs> but as I said, I don't think there was a, a deliberate crime that took place. Uh, it was just, uh, I think, a good time went bad. Authorities continue to search for hard evidence, but with no real proof to support a crime, can Natalie's case ever be solved? It's just that they never had what they really needed to bring a case against these three suspects. Although they brought many cases, it was rejected. Former spokesperson Steve Cohen believes the island did all it could. I have to say I was inside on all of this. I never saw anything but valiant efforts on the part of everyone involved to solve the case. Never even mean-spirited talk about any aspect of the case. They just couldn't do it. He was the one. Natalie's mother, Beth Holloway, thinks the investigation went wrong when authorities failed early on. The case was they had the three men, they had the car, and they had a fabricated story within 72 hours, and they chose to ignore it. So that's the bottom line. And that's the touchy part because Let's face it, we can't go back and change the past. They know that. They know they were wrong. Cohen doesn't completely disagree. There was a pause between when the two security guards were apprehended and released and when Uran and the Calpos were really being investigated. In that pause, whatever could have happened to this case to solve it quickly didn't happen. Direct result. Support. But Beth Holloway goes further, believing that the reason police didn't follow up quickly could be a part of a larger conspiracy. I think 50-50 what I said, orchestration and, and, and incompetence, and if we get into orchestration we could be talking about cover-up. This was not something that these boys were solely uh, spearheading. They had a leader. One theory was that Joran van der Sloot's father, Paulus, a lawyer and former judge in training on the island, help Joran and his friends beat the system. The father talked to the boys and told them that without a body, there wouldn't be a case. And that is something that possibly, we can't rule it out, has played an important role in the way the boys told their stories. He was never interrogated or sent to prison or any of that. He was just a, a, a person that was of interest to them. The elder van der Sloot was held for three days in 2005. He later sued the Aruban government for an unjust detention action, ultimately losing the financial settlement. Hans Maas became Aruba's chief prosecutor two years after Natalie's case began. He's found no evidence of a cover-up. It is not an easy case to solve. Of course, it's very, very sad for the, for the parents that this happened, and it happened to their girl. And, and, um, but it's all, it was also a tragedy for Aruba. So I find out since, since I've been here that many, many people were, were really resolved to solve this case. But since we didn't succeed in the first few months, there was this idea of, of a cover-up and an incompetence. And lead investigator Dolph Richardson still holds out hope that he'll get the break he needs. There's people out there I'm convinced that knows that has a piece of the puzzle, so I would like to appeal to those people to come forward with your information. What, how small you think it is, call us and we will, as I said, um, put all the pieces together and one day we will resolve this case. Back in Mountain Brook, Alabama, a day doesn't go by when Natalie's mother isn't reminded about the daughter she's lost. I took some of Natalie's things that were special um, mm -hmm. and uh, put them in a hope chest from photographs of friends and 
just special things, a fleece jacket that she would wear. On Beth Holloway has moved from Natalie's childhood home. Of course, I kept her dirty clothes from Aruba. And mm -hmm. Here are her. Yeah, just more. Here's something else that I had found after Natalie's disappearance, too. It's a journal that she wrote that I thought was you know, pretty amazing. Here is one where she had visited a where she visited a cancer patient, and here she wrote in. While Beth has little faith Aruba will bring her justice, she does cling to the hope of one day finding her daughter. I've never been out to be the judge and jury. I don't care what they do with him. I really don't. I mean, you know, it's too late for Natalie. It's too late for me. I mean, they're going to do what they want. Of course, I'd like to see, you know, them do the right thing, but that's up to them. That's not up to me. You know, I just would like to bring her home. Today, all we really know for sure is that on May 30th, 2005, Natalie left an Aruban bar with three local men. Everything else is theory or conjecture. The case remains open, but it may be virtually impossible to solve considering the facts an inexperienced police force, media chaos, a lack of evidence, and the lies of three young men who were last seen with Natalie. It amounts to something of a perfect storm that may have washed away any possibility of ever finding out what really happened to Natalie Holloway.